Now we can look at nervous regulation of blood pressure. This begins with the medulla oblongata receiving information. You have here the central chemoreceptor. It receives information about pH of the cerebral spinal fluid. Then you have in your carotids and your aortic arch your peripheral chemoreceptors. They provide information about pH and carbon dioxide of the blood. You also have the peripheral baroreceptors. Which tell you how much these arteries stretch. All of this information is used by the medulla oblongata to decide how it should regulate blood pressure. Let's take a minute to review the relationship between carbon dioxide and pH. You first learned about this back in chapter 3 with cellular respiration. We know that carbon dioxide forms acid in your blood. So if you have high carbon dioxide, you will have more acid, which means your pH will be low. If your carbon dioxide is low, you lack acid in the blood, which means your pH will be too high. Remember that you rely on your lungs to correct these problems. So the more you exhale, That means you're losing acid and you raise pH. The less carbon dioxide you exhale means you allow carbon dioxide to build up in the blood, therefore acid builds up in the blood and you reduce pH. These relationships between carbon dioxide and pH are important for understanding regulation of blood pressure. Okay. Now let's see your two options of what can happen. You have sympathetic and parasympathetic. On this side, we will do sympathetic. If your pH is too low, this means you have high carbon dioxide in your blood. That means you need to pump more blood through your lungs, get rid of the carbon dioxide, and bring your pH back up. So you will use sympathetic stimulation to do this. You have two centers for sympathetic stimulation. 
you have the Cardio Acceleratory Center. It will send sympathetic stimulation to the heart. And you will have norepinephrine onto the heart. This will affect your nodes by having them increase your heart rate. It will affect your myocardium by having it increase your stroke volume. By doing both of these things, you increase cardiac output, which increases blood pressure. Then you also have the vasomotor center. This controls your blood vessels. This center will stimulate vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction will increase resistance, and increasing resistance will increase blood pressure. So here you have three things that happen with sympathetic to increase blood pressure. You increase heart rate, you increase stroke volume, and you have vasoconstriction. This way you send more blood through the lungs and you get rid of that carbon dioxide to fix your pH. Okay, on the other hand, you have parasympathetic. If your pH is too high, which would be because your carbon dioxide is too low, then you want to send less blood through the lungs. That way you can allow carbon dioxide to build up in the blood and bring your pH back down. So in this case, your medulla oblongata will use the cardio inhibitory center. This will stimulate the vagus nerve to secrete acetylcholine onto the nodes of the heart. This will decrease your heart rate. And if you decrease heart rate, you decrease cardiac output, which decreases blood pressure. So this is your nervous regulation of blood pressure. It's the medulla oblongata using sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation to alter cardiac output and resistance in the blood vessels.